So, yeah. Mr. President, um, this is what we got up to today with the New York Post. Prime of his life, yeah. this officer uh, taken out with his family. You placed the call, call order this week. Why was it important for you to talk to Stephanie? Stephanie's incredible, and they wanted me to be there, and I wanted to be there, and I came in from Florida. And uh, what a family, the Diller family. And uh, they lost a, a hero, really. I mean, just a hero. They're devastated. The, the family is devastated. The police force is devastated. The whole country feels this way. And uh, it's happening more and more, and it's really a lack of respect for law and order, and we have to have law and order back in our country, and we're going to because this can't happen. The man that did this were arrested, I guess, over 21 times. And uh, the person in the car with him was likewise had this massive Nickname killer. Yeah, nickname killer. They think it's great. They think it's real cool. It's not cool. And uh, what a family I just saw. And what love in that family. Just incredible to have somebody taken out like that. And Ryan, the baby, one-year-old, is never going to be the same. I mean, you know, it's, uh, doesn't know yet what, what the meaning is, but it's uh, certainly going to have a big impact. That whole family is just so, uh, I, you know, I see it. I see it often. I see it often, but usually it's uh, for different reasons. This was a brutal murder. Especially I'm thinking of you growing up in Queens. Yeah. They were pulled off on a boulevard on the border of Nassau County. You see a guy in a, bu in a bus lane just surveilling a building, and he thinks to himself, Jonathan, I'm going to go find out what's up, and never thinks he's going to get shot in the chest because of that. Not only is he a police officer in the prime of his life cut down, this guy had 70 collars in three years. He, was a, he loved doing the job, and this is a blue blood family. It's true. Blue blood on top of his class. And everything perfect, a beautiful record of uh, doing his job properly and fairly. And this is what happens. It's uh, just so horrible. Jonathan was, you know, they say, I walk in the top. He was the top in every respect, top of his class. And uh, this happened to somebody that should not have happened. So in that town, my town, there'll be about 100,000 police officers. They're coming from Texas. They're coming from all around. They'll stand at attention and take over towns like this. What are your thoughts when you see men and women in blue show up for someone's funeral they never met? So when I was leaving, we paid our respects to the family, most magnificent, beautiful wife, the whole, the grandmother and the mother and everybody. Everybody is there but Jonathan. And uh, what, a, what a scene. But when I was leaving, we're driving down the road and it felt like we were driving for miles and there were men and women in blue. They were going for such a period of this. I said, that's a lot of people. And it was, uh, maybe you were on that journey with us. I don't know, but I tell you what, that was. Uh, it's moving. That was a long blue line. Right. That was a long blue line indeed. And that's respect. They have respect for this family. They have respect for what Jonathan meant. Uh, and, and to me, to the most brave people, look, it's getting getting worse and worse for police because we're not we're not uh, taking care of them. We're not we're not we're not allowing them to do their job properly. If you think about it, the man is arrested 21 times. He's a killer. His nickname, I guess, is Killer, or the His other one is yeah. Killer. And when you think right. about it, this shouldn't be this shouldn't be where you you go up to a car and they shoot you and murder you. This shouldn't be happening in this country, right. and it shouldn't be happening anywhere. We're going to stop it. It's got to stop. We have to have law and order. And when you right. have people repeat, this isn't a repeat offender. This is ridiculous. This is far beyond that. And when and very great violence, too. It's not just 21 times. It's great violence. These people shouldn't be allowed to be anywhere near our society. Right. I don't know. You couldn't see, but I was watching the monitor. We had to get clear by Secret Service, couldn't go to the, the van. I'll be going over this weekend. And the split screen was uh, President Biden, President Obama, and President Clinton going to a fundraiser at Radio City. You know the, uh, the logistics. Would it be possible for President Biden to have got to Massapequa and visited the family? I'd say within a half an hour, depending on the mode of travel. So, you know, they have some pretty fast travel. What does it tell you? I think that politically he can't support the police. I think he's also making a mistake, but I think politically his, his uh, 
base won't let him support the police. And I support the police. I would say at the highest level of any president by far, maybe double or triple. And they knew that. That's why when I walked into that uh, funeral parlor, it was, uh, it was like love. It was just, I've seen what happens with others. Uh, Chris James, they boo her out of the place. And uh, you, you saw that last week. They boo her because they, they know she doesn't stand for law and order. She doesn't stand for what's good, what's proper, what's good for our country. And he's in the same category. He's in the exact same category. They want to shy away from it. They didn't even call the family. They right. could have called. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to know. Even a call would be perhaps nice. I'm not sure they'd take his call, right? I'm really not sure they'd take his call. Two police commissioners greeted you. That's true. And I thought uh, Commissioner Kaban said, thank you for coming. You did. And Commissioner Ryder right there. That's important for you. Yeah. Well, it's important for the country. I think it's, uh, it was uh, almost affection in both cases because, you know, they, they're there and they're very right. devastated right. By, by that. And uh, the one from New York City came out and uh, right. I've known him a little bit and uh, I think he's doing the best he can. But, you know, the, the restrictions that are put on the police are so incredible. Right. They're protecting the criminal. They're not protecting the police. The criminal has far more protection than a police officer. A police officer right. gets rough, as in some cases you have to be, because it's the only right. thing they understand. And he gets rough, and they, he ends up losing his house, his pension, his right. family. He ends up losing everything. It's crazy what's going on. So I'm um, seeing what's happening at Radio City. They expect to raise $25 million right across from where Fox is. You have three presidents showing up. And the talk is that Barack Obama is talking to uh, the the chief of staff of President Biden, talking to Biden every day, Bill Clinton, too. Do you feel like you're running against three presidents? Well, I'm running against uh, people that I don't really think have a very good understanding of what's going on in our nation. Uh, All when, three? Uh, look, I, I don't see anybody coming to any other conclusion. I don't see anybody condemning the fact that 15 million people have probably that number. I believe it's that number. It might be more than that have entered our country from countries all over the world, and they're coming from prisons and jails. They're coming from mental institutions and insane asylum, a step above. They're coming as terrorists. We have many terrorists coming into our country. So uh, it doesn't matter whether you have three presidents or 10 presidents. They don't know what's happening if they're not mentioning it. And they don't talk about it. I can tell you, Obama mm -hmm. doesn't talk about it. Nobody else talks about it that I see. I talk about it. And the reason I talk about it, you know, we built 571 miles of wall, and we were going, which is more than I said I was going to build, and we were going to build an additional 200 right. miles of wall, and it would have stopped it even further. We had the best border in history, now we have the worst border in history. We have the worst border, Brian, in the history of the world. There's never been a country ever, third world, banana republic, there's never been a country that allowed people to pour in like this. They would have... I say in, in rallies, they would have used sticks and stones to but stop that. Did you see over the weekend on 60 Minutes the president of Mexico and says, we're not going to shut down our border until you change your policy on Cuba and change your policy on Venezuela? Is it okay for the Mexican president to dictate American policy? Well, he said much more than that. He said he wants $10 billion essentially just to talk. $10 billion to talk. And that's come out since. And no, that wouldn't happen with me. I get along great with him. I dealt with him. And, you know, he supplied us with... 28,000 soldiers, so that's why we had the best so what changed? while I was building the what wall. What changed? A lack of respect for the president. It's very simple. Lack of respect for the president. They would never say that to me. They would never say, before we even took they want $10 billion a year. Mexico just asked for $10 billion a year. They would never ask it. I wouldn't give them 10 cents. They know that. Uh, they'll end up paying us $10 billion a year before that would happen. Uh, no, it's a uh, lack of respect for our president, lack of respect for our country, but the country's led by a man who can't put two sentences together. And, you know, they're raising money. They always raise money. They always raise more money. We uh, do fine. We don't need, you don't need Does that Does it worry you money. how much money he's raising? No. And that you're, re you're refiguring out the RNC at this point? No, I think we're doing great with the RNC and we have plenty of money. We're doing very well. We're just, we're gonna announce numbers that are record setting numbers in a week or so. Uh, we have, the RNC is uh, reconstituted just because we wanted to make a change, but we're doing tremendously well. We're raising a lot of money. We're going to announce, I think, the biggest numbers that we've ever raised. Speaking of big numbers, Truth Social is going through the roof. It's yeah. worth billions of dollars, and 
not looking, you're not looking to cash in, I don't think, but it's, you probably got an extra $5 billion in your checking account. Um, what does that mean to you? And how does this, how did this happen? Well, truth has been amazing. Uh, it gave me a voice, you know, when I was terminated from Twitter, it was vicious. I, I had more than I think any other person had, and all of a sudden I didn't have a voice. And uh, that happened also with uh, some other people with a certain viewpoint, and it shouldn't happen. And I think we're probably in the majority, actually, if you want to know the truth. But they terminated me, and I opened, uh, I started working on something, a platform that's really great, and it's true social, and uh, it's in the process of being public, and now it's public, and the stock has gone through the roof. And, and really, this is, I, I think, in the true sense, this is really a, uh, it's a great sign of where the people in this country stand. It's almost like a poll. But you see how hot it is. It's one of the hottest stocks that anybody's ever seen. And uh, I'm very honored by that. But you know what? I view it as a poll. And I call it the voice. It's the voice of America. It's my voice. I happen to be the leading candidate, including, uh, I don't know if you've seen the numbers with Biden, but the numbers are way above Biden. And people aren't going to stand What numbers are? You mean followers? The polls. Oh, the polls. Okay. Followers, too, yeah. actually. But oh. the polls are way above Biden. We had, uh, your Fox just came out with a good one, but we have some that are 11 and 12 points up. And you would think that, uh, frankly, it would be much more, I have a friend who's a Democrat, he said, I can't understand why you're not winning by 40 or 50 points. Well, it doesn't work that way because you have certain groups of people that always vote a certain way. But uh, we're leading by a lot. And uh, people want justice in this country. They want law and order in this country. They have to have law and order in the country. They want to have strong borders. Right. And they have to have, you know, look at the taxes. They want to double and triple and quadruple the taxes. They don't want that. And, you know, what we did with the military, we defeated ISIS, and then we didn't have any wars. And we were respected all over the world. We gave you the largest tax right. cuts in history. You're paying a lot less, but we gave you the largest tax cuts, larger than the Ronald Reagan tax cuts, and we gave you the largest But they evaporate cuts. in 2025. That's so right. if you don't get, if you That's don't right. get, uh, if you don't win, they're gone. Well, if I don't win, that means your taxes are going to go up fourfold. Right. Fourfold. RFK announced a running mate this week, 35-year-old uh, from the tech center. Seems to be uh, very progressive. They to put, put it mildly. To put all three of you together, it widens your lead right now. How do you view RFK and his new running mate? Well, I've always liked him, and I've known him, actually, for a long time. I've liked him. He's a very liberal guy. He's probably the most liberal person in the race, including the Green Party. And uh, so I think he's probably going to hurt Biden. I don't see him hurting me. Our people are solid. We have a very, very solid core, and I think that core is 60 percent. So RFK hurts him more? I think so, yeah. I think so. He's very, very, he's ultra-liberal. Or ultra progressive is they'd rather have. They don't like the word liberal anymore. You know, you're supposed to use progressive, so therefore I'll probably use liberal. But he's a very, uh, he's a very far left person. Very, very. I think the most in the race. A lot of people were thinking, well, maybe he's going to hurt Trump. I, I don't see it. Once they see his record, they're going to understand how how far left right. he is. He's a radical left person. And again, I've known him right. for a long time. I understand him. I like him. I get along with him. But that's uh, his inclination. His running mate is, makes him look like a baby in terms of being left. His, right. She is really left. But she also has enough money from her husband that she can help him finance a campaign. For five weeks, it looks like they say you're going to be stuck in a courtroom four days a week. Yeah, yeah. This is how, all how because do you overcome, of Biden. How do you overcome that? How do you so overcome fun? not being out there yeah. and not being on the stump, the campaign trail, doing yeah. interviews like this? Well, it's a shame that it has to take place. This is, again, third world country stuff, whether it's borders or whether it says uh, they've weaponized the Department of Justice. They've weaponized the FBI. They raided my house. Uh, they find nothing. Look how well I'm doing. And the people understand it. Look at what's going on. I have Fanny, well, Fanny or Fanny, as she likes to be called, in Georgia. That's a scam. We have the DA Bragg. That's a scam. Everybody says you read the people that you have, Jonathan Turley and McCarthy and right. all the good people that you have on. They say this is a case that shouldn't be brought. It's not even a crime. And it's all it all comes out of the White House. It all comes out. They have a January 6 case, which is a scam. The whole thing is is a terrible thing. They've never done it before in this country. It's done. In fact, it's done a lot, but it's always in third world countries. It now has hit the United States. And I'll tell you, 
it's the biggest lead I've ever had in polls. I'm leading by so much. And I don't believe I'd be leading by that much without it. People see what's happening. Right. And it's the only thing he has going. His policies are horrible. He's an incompetent man. He's the worst president in the history of our country right. by far. He's a corrupt person. He's a totally corrupt person. The only thing they can do is prosecute me. And I find that every single day I go into court, I end up doing better because they're scams. And the good thing is through you and through your friends at Fox and others, uh, I have a voice. And when I explain it to people, they understand it. Oh, you have to explain it. But when I explain it to people, they understand it. When I went to Georgia and I did that mugshot, people got it right away. This whole thing is a, it's a political circus. And what it really is, is election interference. They want to disturb, just like you say, you spend time in court. But you know, you spend time in court, but you also right. get the word out pretty good during intermissions and other times. But it's a very unfair situation and I'm honored. I'll tell you what, every time they do this, in a way, I'm honored because I'm doing it for the American people. You have a situation now where you have to have $175 million yeah. in eight days. Can you yeah. do it? Sure, I can. And he came out with this number out of the wind. He came out, he said, he's got a lot of cash. I'll take it from him. And they want to take it because this way I can't use it to campaign. In other words, I was going to use a lot of that money to campaign. And the Court of Appeals uh, reduced it very substantially by 60% which is very rare that they do that. But he's actually been overturned now five times on the case. He's a whack job and he's totally corrupt. And this is a case that should have never been brought. Uh, he valued Mar-a-Lago at $18 million. And the experts say it's worth 50 to 100 times that amount. He lost yeah. all credibility when he did that. But it was, uh, it was a gift when he did that because people see he's a whack. Now he's a corrupt judge and Letitia James is a corrupt person. And what it's doing is keeping people out of New York. I hear the New York Stock Exchange right. is complaining. Everybody's complaining because people see this scam that they're running and it's keeping people out of New York. It's keeping people from investing in it. They don't have to be here. Right. They can be in other states where they're going or they can be in other countries. They don't need this. So well, they're it's a very are, bad thing. See, they are looking to prosecute Danny Penny, the Marine who put that yeah. uh, suspect in a, a chokehold, uh, submission hold. And he saved a lot of people yeah. to on that. And I also understand. they put your CFO in at Rikers Can Island. Can you imagine? For doing nothing. Compare. Look at the crime. You have murderers. You have killers. You have... They, when I went to court with Bragg, they had eight prosecutors in court over what McCarthy, Turley, and every other legal so virtually every said he did nothing wrong. Right. And yet you have people getting murdered on the street and nothing happens to them. What a shame. What's going on here? What a shame. What is the message to the presidents at Radio City right now? Before you leave New York and go back to Florida, what did they miss today? Well, they missed a very sad moment for our country, but it's a moment that they have to be a part of, whether they like it or not. They can't skip this moment. I've never seen so many police. I've never seen so many firemen, a lot of firemen. They view it, right. you know, in a very similar way, and I understand that. But they're going to have to get involved a little bit because this country is going to hell. Our country is not respected anymore. We're really, I say it in my rallies and my speeches, we're a nation in decline. We are a nation but in decline. But fixable. But totally fixable. But we have to do it fast. Tell you what, the most important day in the history of our country is going to be November 5th. That's election day. It's going to be November 5th. That is the most important period of time. It's the most important day in the history of our country. Our country's going bad, and it's going to be changed on November 5th. And if it's not changed, we're not going to have a country anymore. And my very last question, if both of you just represent your own parties, it's not going to be enough. You have to get the middle, the independents, the undecideds. Yeah. What is the Trump plan to get the independents undecideds? I think I have the independents. I think it's uh, false stuff. I did very well in the first election, 2016. I did even better in the second election by millions and millions of votes. And yet I have not seen the kind of spirit that I have right now, just driving through the streets of an area that right. you grew up in, the people are going wild and right. they, they want something. You know, this is an election where you really have two people. I ran it for four, he ran it for four, and people love when I ran it for four. They, can, they have a nice, simple choice. Right now, we have a porous country. We have a country that's going to hell. We have a country that's a crime-ridden mess. And I'll tell you something. 
when you take a look at what the migrants are doing, we have a new category of crime. It's called migrant crime. They call them newcomers. Yeah, they want to call them newcomers. That's true. They do want to call them newcomers. It's called migrant crime, and it's vicious, violent crime. Add that to where it was before, right. and you get yourself a big mess. No, uh, we people want safety. They want low taxes. They want good education. They want a strong military. They want to have a country that's respected all over the world. We're left at all over the world. We have a guy can't walk up a flight of stairs or down a flight of stairs. Literally, he can't put two sentences together. We need to be respected as a country. When Mexico says we want $10 billion a year just to talk, they would never say that to me, Brian, I tell you. Best decision you made, going to All American. You're about to have it in Massapequa, a burger place. I understand your, your people bought you All-American in Massapequa, so for that, I think you're going to be happy on the exit. That's what I've heard. Great to actually. see you, um, Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for Thank the time. You. Thank Appreciate you very it. much.